Uh, so Jasmine, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you and it's a pleasure to speak to you today about your short film called Motherland. Uh, it's premiering this Tuesday, September 12th at TIFF. It's very exciting, very exciting time. Uh, I had the opportunity to screen this film and um, it, it, it's beautiful. Uh, so congratulations on this, uh, this short film. Um, let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we won't go into uh, too much spoilers because you know people still need to watch it, but there are a lot of um, just beautiful moments that happen in this in this in this short in such a short period of time. That's why I love shorts. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about um, the exploration of the the time period because it's a very delicate topic. Yeah. Uh, 1979, the Iranian hostage crisis. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think a lot of people have a lot of knowledge on this. They don't. Uh, it's a, I, I, I personally didn't, I'm being honest with you, I did not. So I had to do a little bit of research. So just tell us a little bit about that time period and, and how traumatic it was for everybody. Well, that's part of the reason why I wanted to make it because I think people's knowledge of the hostage crisis really is attached to the movie Argo, which was directed by Ben Affleck and a lot of the American perspective and not the main audience. Um, and basically the inspiration for the story comes from my father's story and my mother's story. So you know, Katie and Bob Ackley's film are inspired by my parents. And my father came from Iran and went to the U.S., uh, went to Massachusetts. And when he was there as like a 18, 19 year old, the hostage crisis happened. And him and all the students all of a sudden came under this threat of, you know, racism, violence, um, not being able to get jobs, and then also deportation because Jimmy Carter is toying with the idea of deporting all the Iranian um, so I, I was inspired by my parents' story, my father's story specifically, and I thought, you know, I want to look at this meet the parents sort of story as a way of getting into a, a social and political topic that I think a lot of people don't know about. And for me, a lot of like West Asian Middle Eastern representation is so limited in Canada, in the U.S., in countries like diaspora or diaspora representation. Um, Iran and Turkey both are like the best, some of the best in the world. But in terms of diaspora representation and what we see of Iranians on the ground in our history and theater, there isn't much to show. So for me, I wanted to make a story that, you know, really showed people like this misconception about Middle Eastern people started here. It started in '79. Yeah. Um, and just for people who don't know, the hostage crisis was an event where, in November fourth, nineteen seventy-nine, the U.S. Embassy in Tehran by a group of Iranian students who supported um, the Islamic uh, regime that was coming to power at the time. So it was a, it was a way for them to, um, so it's, it's complicated, I would read up on it if people mm -hmm. wanted to, but it's it was sort of the first time this ever happened in American history in terms of their own people being taken captive like that, and it was after the Vietnam War. So there was a lot of tension in the air. And I thought, what a good way to, what an interesting atmosphere to make a story in such a short space. Yeah, yeah. So Babak in the film, he's kind of living a dual life. Mm -hmm. He's got, you know, his homeland, his his who he would consider his family, uh, and he's involved in protesting, uh, you know, as soon as the film opens up. And then he's also got this dual life where he's trying to adapt to American culture. He's trying to uh, adapt in many ways, you know, changing his name, changing his appearance to try to fit in. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is not, um, this is very common. It's very common with uh, with many cultures coming to North America and having to feel like they need to change their name to Bob yeah. just to try to fit in. So um, did your father have to go through that situation of having to adapt and change his name and appearance and all that? Yeah. My dad's name, he's passed away now, but his name was Bob Ackley. So I, I kept the name for the, the movie. And growing up, we grew up in a small town well, it's a small city outside of Tehran um, that was predominantly white and conservative. And I remember growing up and just hearing him say that my name is Bob because nobody could pronounce his name. Um, and I think also there was this like desire to assimilate and be accepted. And so, you know, there's, there's the name part and then there's the facial hair part, which took a lot of Middle Eastern men, their facial hair, their hair is politicized. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show that. I wanted to show that even to this day, I know I have friends who before they go to the airport, they're shaving off their beard because yeah. of the post 9-11. Yeah. 
but that also was a thing back then. And in the movie, it's referenced. He was like one of the guys on Steven's Lonely Planet that he died, his friend said. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I think to me, I'm pinning on something that happened in the seventies and hundreds, but I'm also trying to broaden it to something that still happens today. Um, with people from Muslim countries, people from Middle Eastern people, you know, that, that sort of thing. So yeah, my dad, I just kind of, I still think about all the sort of microaggressions and all the different ways in which he had to shape shift or constantly keep his identity in order to be accepted. And he, he still never really was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about his uh, fiance's parents and how they both treated him um, differently uh, in different ways, but they were both passive aggressive in their own way. Um, the mother specifically, uh, you know, tried to be nice about it, the situation, but still was passive aggressive. And then the father was just straight up aggressive. Um, it was a very difficult scene to watch. Um, so I, I applaud you for having that encounter. Uh, it was very difficult. I actually thought it was going to go in a completely t terrible direction. So I, I was I was pretty shocked at the moment. And then you follow that scene up with another traumatic moment. Um, another situation that a lot of immigrant um, people of Im that are immigrate to countries in these situations of wartime have to deal with the fact that they still have family back home. You know, Baba calling his mother and trying to figure out what is happening there. That I can't comprehend how difficult that situation could possibly be when he's trying to deal with his own struggles here and has to deal with, you know, are my are my family even still alive? That's a that was a difficult a difficult watch. Um, can you tell me a little bit about crafting those two scenes? Yeah, I wanted to show, you know, in reality. Bob Act going into that environment in Iowa, this rural Iowa situation, probably actually would have ended up worse than how I actually painted it on paper. Yeah. Um, my grandfather, so my mom's dad, wouldn't speak to my mom in either of those encounters when they found out she was married to the wrong man. Okay. Um, and they're Canadian. And they're Canadian. So this, the character of Werner, which is the, the father of Woody in the film who, who rejects Bob Act, mm -hmm. um, he was based on my grandfather. He was an Alberta person from Alberta. He was German. Um, and I based that, but I put it in Iowa, which is like the tension is even higher in the film. Yes. So, you know, for me, I, as a filmmaker, I didn't want to just make the scene where, you know, Bob Ack walks in and there's this big blow up. And, all, you know, it, to me, it's more interesting to watch people struggle through their own um, prejudices and try to kind of like, it's layered, you know, it's their daughter, they want their daughter to be happy, but, you know, they're fighting their own prejudices. And yeah. I think for Ruth, which is the mom, um, her, she's kind of this like Midwestern woman, who's probably just coming up in like the 1900s. Like she's coming, she has this way of dealing with conflict in a way that's, we'll just smooth it over, you know what I mean? And then she goes out to meet her father and that's a whole different story because it's, um, with Werner in that scene, he's he's a German guy, but he's he kind of thinks that's that's okay. I think that's the okay immigrant. We we found in America. We yes. developed this connection. Yes. But you're you as an immigrant, you're different than us. Yeah. They're not this is not the same. Because I think that scene is about like them kind of they find a relational uh, commonality in the sense that they were both brought up by their moms, they both lost their fathers. But Werner's the one who says, even though you're trying to relate to me, but wait a second, we're actually from the same country. Mm -hmm. And never forget that we're from the same country. Yes. Yeah. So I thought a lot about like these um, these sort of Sicilian filmmakers that are like the Joe Santini or like Scorsese and Coppola who made immigrant stories basically. Like yeah. The Godfather is even as like an immigrant movie. It is, yes. Um, so I was thinking about those movies too when I was making this because I was saying, you know, like where where's our immigrant it's going to look different, obviously, than the Italian version, but I, I did the little cup to that, you know, like that way of telling that story. Um, so I was just really inspired. By yeah, that. yeah. So there are two references uh, early in the movie that uh, you touched on, uh, the Al Pacino reference and the uh, Bruce Lee reference. Uh, both immigrants. Yes. Both had 
you know, I've at some point definitely had a struggle with, you know, uh, assimilating and those two references. Even after becoming famous, still struggled. They still weren't accepted, uh, which is difficult to process because then that that just makes it even more difficult for everybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. But with Lucy, I mean, both of those things are very tied into the Iranian diet, the diaspora, because um, I think I heard a lot of Iranian youths growing up being like, oh, you know, trying to find somebody who isn't really Lucy to say, I look, I look like them, you know, like, um, and then with Lucy, like, Lucy was my dad's maid growing up, and then later on, she became a job actress, and then, oddly enough, she also became a Lucy. And I always, you know, after watching uh, both of the documentaries and hearing both of the stories, I realized to me they were for so many immigrants from Asia, especially because it was like this idea of you made the American dream, you got there. Yeah. And so, like, I wanted to make reference to that and have like a poster that kind of was, you know, referencing Lucy because it's true he said he was to so many um, Asian immigrants, whether it's West Asia or Southeast Asia. Yeah. Are you excited for your uh, the premiere on Tuesday? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm nervous as per usual. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's interesting to keep it later in the fest, but I think that's good because shorts are never like the bell of the ball. It's like everybody you should really focus on the shorts during this time. So it's kind of nice that it's a little bit after the normal people. <laughs> I'm always nervous every time my film plays. It's watching with an audience is insane. I've never been to the, I haven't been to a short film uh, screening at TIFF. How many are in the program I together? Like seven. Seven? And I'm, and I'm the last one. So the I'll last be one. sitting there. Okay. Nerve, like nervous for like an hour. <laughs> yeah. Place. Yeah. 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 Uh, I guess, yeah, that is, that is nerve wracking waiting for yours to, to premiere. Yeah. But it's going to be great. And, and I'm, I, everyone's going to love it. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful film. So congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time today.